Hello again and welcome back to our course on Excel 2019 Advanced. In this section we're going to look at connecting to data sources on the web. This has been a facility that has been available in Excel for a little while now, but over recent versions not only has it changed in the sense that there have been some new ways of doing it introduced, but the power and flexibility of these approaches has also greatly increased. So what I'm going to do in this section by way of an example is to get some live stock market data and put it into an Excel workbook. Now there might be various reasons you might want to do this. For instance, you may be developing an application in Excel where you need to get the latest value of an index or maybe the latest exchange rate. Maybe you're doing something related to travel and exchanging money. But it is a pretty straightforward thing to do and as I said the main problem is finding suitable websites where you can get the indexes exchange rates that you need without too much trouble. So I'm going to click on the data ribbon, the get data drop down and I'm going to go to from other sources and select from web. And this will bring up the from web dialog box which will allow me to enter in a URL where the data resides. So basically the data that I want to bring in to my Excel workbook. Now I've already gone off and found a website that I want to bring in so I'm just going to paste it into the URL box. So you can see it's yahoo.com and it's given me the world indices or the indexes and I'm going to click on the OK button. Sometimes this can take a few moments to connect but you can see now that it's connected and underneath the URL I have a couple of items here and I'm going to click on the one that says table zero and you can see there it's pulled through those world indexes. So I'm happy that that's the information that I want to pull into my Excel workbook and at the bottom I have a load button and I'm going to click the drop down and select the load to option. So now Excel is asking me how I want to import this data. Do I want to import it into a table, a pivot table report, a pivot chart, or do I want to only create the connection? Now in this instance, I just want to pull it into Excel and I'm fairly happy for that to come in as a table. So I'm going to leave that default option selected. I'm going to select existing worksheet and you can see there it says cell A1. And if you look on my worksheet, you can see the marching ants are now around cell A1. So that is where my data is going to go. And I'm going to click on the OK button. And after a moment or two, you can now see those indexes in my worksheet in a table. So I have here in column B from the FTSE 100. And if I do control down, all the way down to the Nifty 50. And it's pulled through all of those values that were available on that website. Now having done that, a number of things happen. And one of the things that happens is that Excel sets up a connection. And if you cast your eyes over to the right hand side of the screen, you'll see that we now have a pane running down the side, which shows those queries and connections. And you can see there it says table zero, 35 rows loaded. I also now have a query tools contextual ribbon. So if you cast your eyes up to the top of the screen and click on query, you'll see I have numerous different options that will allow me to control this query. Now, one of the cool things when you set up a connection like this is that it does live updates. So when these market prices change, they will be updated live in my worksheet. And if you want to force that change, you'll see that on the query ribbon, you do have a refresh button. Now, if I click the refresh button to refresh that background query, you won't see too much of a change. And the reason why is that I'm doing this on a Saturday and all of the markets are currently closed. But if this was a weekday and I clicked the refresh button, any updates that have been made to those market prices will automatically feed through to my worksheet. But I could go a step further than that and I could actually set this up so that they're automatically updated for me so I don't have to come in and click that refresh button. And that's what I'm going to do next. So from this pane on the right hand side, I'm going to right click on table zero and I'm going to select properties. 
I'm going to give this query a, a much more useful name. So I'm going to call it market data. And I'm going to set a couple of refresh values, one of which is to do an automatic refresh on a timer. Now, normally you'd set this according to how up to date you want these values to be. But for the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to set it to a very small value, just two minutes. And I'm also going to check the box that says refresh data when opening the file. That will ensure that whenever I open this file, I will have the latest updates in my data. So let's click on OK. And you can see that change to the title has now taken effect in the queries and connections pane on the right hand side. It's now labeled as market data as opposed to the rather innocuous table zero. So again, if this were a weekday, you would see that after two minutes, these prices would update themselves. Now I want to show you what happens if I come back to that workbook at a later time. Now I'm going to open that same workbook again. So let's click on File. I'm going to select Open. And in my list of recent, I can see my file. I called it Connect to Web Data. So let's open it. And when I open it again, Excel issues a security warning. Bear in mind, we have external data connections in this workbook. So as usual, it's always worth giving some thought to this. So are you happy with the content? And of course, in this case, I am. Now, because I changed the settings to refresh on open, again, if this was a weekday and those markets were open, it would have refreshed that background query and I would have the latest up-to-date figures in my worksheet. Something that you do need to be a little bit wary of is that if you have a slow or intermittent or indeed expensive internet connection, you do need to be a bit wary of importing large complex data feeds. The slowness or expense of your internet connection can sometimes make it an impractical proposition. I've seen situations where somebody has tried to get large volumes of data from the web updated every minute or two and it's basically ground their internet connection to a halt. So you do need to tailor your use of this feature according to the quality of your internet connection. That's it for connecting to web data sources. In the next section, we're going to look at an example of get and transform. So please join me for that. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. Now to see the rest of the videos in this advanced Excel 2019 playlist, click over there. Finally, if you're enjoying this training, please leave us a thumbs up and some comments. Now let's continue with our Microsoft Excel training.